Hey, what's going on guys? Tonight's video we're going to be discussing a slow drip on our shower. And while the water is off, it drips very slowly. Now I have the water to the house completely shut off, that's why it's not dripping at the moment. But as you can see, a little bit is crusting right here, and I have my bucket. And this is how much has filled up in probably maybe half an hour to 45 minutes. So very, very wasteful. Again, it could be more than this, but this is going to be a drip from your shower head. Once the water is off, you're going to have a slow drip from your shower head. Now the first thing you do is you need to turn off the water to the completely to the whole house. So I'm going to show you exactly right now how to do that. Normally, if it's your home, it's in front by your grass in front of your home. If you're in a condominium, it could be inside your water heater cabinet or next to it. Uh, I do live in a condo, and so mine is in front of my garage on the street. So let me show you that now. All right, guys, this is what your water cover is going to look like out in front of your home or apartment here. And you want to properly find your number. Mine is 83, so it's faded, but it says 83 there. You do not want to shut off your neighbor's water. All right, guys, here we have, we're just going to grab our flashlight here, and we're going to come out here again and just use like a screwdriver to lift this little lid up. Sometimes you kind of have to wiggle it around. Depends on the last time it was brought up, and we got to be a little careful or it could kind of slip down in there. You can use some gloves, just a little dirty in there. You know, you might have a couple worms in there, but uh, let's go ahead and shine our flashlight up in here, and I'm gonna show you, here is our water valve here with our little handle switch valve here, right here. Now, as you can see, it's a vertical, which means the flow of water is going. So we're gonna crank this to the left. Again, you can, might wanna rotate your hand. Just slip it on in there, and you're gonna crank it to the left so it becomes horizontal, and that means that the flow of water has been cut off. So horizontal, it's been cut off. Bring it back to vertical when you're done, and that will increase the flow. Again, vertical, horizontal, to cut it off completely. So here it is to the left there, horizontal. Okay, now with the whole entire water shut off to the entire condo, and you can test it by turning on your sink. You're going to see a little bit of a stream, and then it's going to cut off. You go to flush your toilet and it won't be able to refill, etc. Or you can even try to turn on your shower. It will drip a little bit and for this video I won't do that. But that's how you know your water is completely shut off there. And so with this type of a shower unit here, again it's just pull out for turning on. Right is cold, left is hot. So right here you just actually just dig your fingernail in and you remove your cap here. Or a flathead screwdriver, you can remove that. And then we see a Phillips head screwdriver right here. Uh, a nut, I should say. So I'm going to use two hands. I'm going to go ahead and remove this here, and we're going to get to the back stem portion and why we're leaking. Okay, guys, and once the screw is removed, then it depends how old your shower unit is. You might have to give it a good tug, but uh, mine was caked on there a little bit with some crustacean. But anyway, it just slips right off, and this is your this is your stem inside here, and then we have our little cover which is right here. Now again, it's gonna be a little bit difficult, depends how old your system is, but we wanna go ahead and remove this cover here and get to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these screws down here just so I can see a little bit better of what I'm doing. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this just so that I can see inside a little bit better. Okay guys, so I went to go pull this little sleeve off here, which is all you need to do. And unfortunately I heard a drop behind it and I was like, oh no, I thought I caused some damage. But what it was, it was just a little piece of this plaster rock here that fell behind onto the wood here. Now, unfortunately, I've taken off my sealant here, so when I put it back on, I'll have to reseal it. I'll have to remove this, reseal it so that no water gets down below it there. I'll remove this with a razor blade, re-caulk it here as well. But this here is really jammed on here, so I might, might use a little oil, get it in there, and then slide this little silver tube off right here. It just slides straight back. Alrighty guys, I slipped it right off there. And again, just shot some penetrating WD-40 oil on it right there and just wiggled it back and forth and then slid it straight back, of course, because you have the notches right here. Just slid it straight back and that's the reason why a lot of years have just caked on there. 
lot of crustacean going on. So now this is the cartridge holder and this is the stem inside it here. And what the problem is, is we're leaking inside the stem. So we need to remove this little clip right here. So let's get our needle nose pliers and we'll go ahead and remove this clip here. Okay guys, I just went ahead and just grabbed the top of it, pulled it straight up. And this is the clip that is on it. And now we can go ahead and release the stem here. Sometimes it does take a special tool, but we're gonna go ahead and try our best to just use our pliers and go ahead and remove that without a special tool. If needs be, we'll use a special tool. All right guys, no special tool needed in my case. Now, when it was originally in there, as you can see here, there's a little lip right there. Sorry for my cut on my thumb there. And a little lip there. What I did is instead of a special tool, I just jimmy rigged these guys, needle nose in there, and I just turned it about 90 degrees, I believe, because they were face up. And then I just turned these to the right until they were like that. And then what I did, I just grabbed these guys right here, grabbed the end of my stem here, and I just pulled it out. And you're just gonna tug it because you wanna get it through this black O-ring right here. This is what's keeping it sealed in there. And it depends how old your system is. You might have to give it a good tug or not, but okay, now that that is out, the culprit of these bad stems, majority of the time they're just these black O-rings. See, there's one right there, right on the end there with all that crustacean, that is a bad O-ring. And then also down here, we have another O-ring as well. Now, the best thing to do, guys, to tell you the truth, if you have a spare few bucks, these are gonna be anywhere from eight to $15 or so at Home Depot. All right, guys, well, to make a long story short, the new O-rings did not work. As you can see, there is just a lot of corrosion here, all through inside the cartridge as well, the stem. And it just, you know what? It's time for a new one, guys. Again, this is 25, 30 years old. So, went down to the store. This is the brand new one. Here's your little special tool here, that little white plastic cap. That is what turns the, um, the top right here. But again, I showed you how to do it with your needle nose pliers. You just slip them in so the teeth are there and there. But if you do go for a new one, it does come with a plastic cap. But just know that if it's been in there for many, many years, it will be a little tough to, you know, turn if there's a lot of corrosion. So, I have my new one here. Again, this is, um, I don't know how you pronounce this, M-O-N-E, Moan. This is part number 1225. So if yours looks exactly like this with an O-ring where my thumb is, an O-ring here, and it's brass on the inside with a plastic outside cartridge, they call this, uh, let's see here, single handle faucet replacement cartridge. This was about 22 after tax. I'll link it in the description box. Hopefully we can get a better deal online if you don't mind waiting a little bit. Again, what I did is I matched it up. Same exact thing in the store. So let's put this new one on in. Everything will be perfect. You know, it is cheaper if you do replace it with the O-rings and it does work. Of course, that's like a couple bucks, but a brand spanking new one, no worries. 22 out the door, maybe even cheaper again uh, online. And what's nice about the new one, guys, is it does have some pre-lubricated grease on it as well, which is very nice. I wasn't aware of that. So now we're going to take our little tool here, and again, we're going to just push it like this. We're going to slide it on in. And then once it's in, we're going to go ahead and turn it. And the easiest thing to do to turn it is you might grab your guys here once it's shoved in, turn it. I think that is 45 degrees until it's straight up so we can put our pin back in. There we go. Now we need to put our pin back in. Now the little plastic pieces are up and down and we'll just slip our pin right back in here. And then that just pushes down so our pin is now, and now our pin is locking it into place right there. Okay, that's wonderful guys. That looks really, really good. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put our faceplate back on, but first we're going to go ahead and grab our little guy right here again, and we're just going to slip that right over the top, making sure it all goes all the way back to the part right there. There we go. Okay, now what we're going to do is now we're going to put on our face here, and then we're gonna re-silicone it. And then all you do is you just put your knob back on like this, guys, and screw that in, and then put your little cap back on the top, and you're all done. Well, guys, I hope this video does help you a lot, and you're able to fix your leaky shower head. 
you might, before you silicone this, if you've taken off this faceplate, again, you do not have to take off that, but I had to because this little sleeve would not come off. So if you guys have taken this off, um, what I would do is I would test it out. Put the uh, cap back on without the silicone thing here, and then turn on the shower. Make sure there's no leakage down underneath here or right here, pouring out of right here. That means, you know, because obviously if there is, take the part back and get another one if it's, you know, bad manufacturing because that stem installed correctly should have no drips coming out of the handle area here or here once you stop the water. Now, once you stop the water, there might be a little bit of dripping, but then it should stop. There should be no, you know, 30 seconds drop, 30 seconds drop, 10 seconds drop. All right, guys, real quickly before I leave you here. Now, if you turn on your shower and your cold is reversed to hot and your hot is reversed to cold, where the normal direction it would be for hot is now cold, what you need to do is you just need to go ahead and remove your handle once again. And again, I'm still testing and it works out perfectly, guys. I got no drips. And so what you wanna do is you wanna grab some needle nose um, and you wanna go ahead and pull this stem, just the end of it, right here, all the way out, and then you're gonna take the needle nose pliers and then just turn it 180 degrees. And then you're gonna put your handle back on, and then your hot will be hot and your cold, your cold. It also, if that doesn't make any sense, it's gonna be on your directions that came in your package, right here, reversing hot and cold. You're just gonna go ahead and again, 180 degrees, clamp it on there, rotate it 180 degrees, and then put your handle back on, guys. Very simple. And so, hopefully that helped. So anyway, I hope that has helped you guys. Again, look in that description box below for the parts. I'll try to list those. We'll try to get a good deal on those. And again, look at all my other videos. I have some other plumbing videos, electrical issues, et cetera, et cetera. Please subscribe if you guys have liked the video, and please thumbs that up. You guys have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.